Hi guys, this is just a quick recap of process costing. So it's not meant to be a detailed revision of process costing, but it's rather just a quick recap of what you need to know before you can continue with this section on process costing. So first you need to know when do we use process costing as opposed to the other costing techniques. So when we cost a product or assign cost to a product, we could use job costing if it's a unique product or service, so we can assign the cost directly um, using job costing. But then some some cases, that's going to be too time consuming and because it's repetitive, we can use process costing. So that is when it's a continuous process and the products are homogenous or the same. So if you think of um, something like baked beans, um, it won't make sense to, to cost each individual can every time we produce a can, um, since we produce, um, say, thousands of cans in a specific or in a specific product or production batch, we would rather than um, allocate all the costs to that specific batch and then divide it by the number of units. So that is basically what process costing does. We take costs for a specific period for a specific process, divide it by the units that we produced with that cost. So that's all it is. It's cost per unit that we try to calculate. Now, if there's no opening and closing work in process, in other words, if we don't have any incomplete units at the start or the end of that specific period, then it's going to be easy um, since we just take all the costs we incurred for the period, divide it by all the units that came from the period that was started and completed during the period. But the problem comes in if we have opening or closing work in process. So if you think of a timeline, this is the period for which we are doing the costing. If we at the start of the process have incomplete products, so we've only completed half um, or the, the, the process that we only reached half of the stage of completion for that specific process. Um, and at the end of the period, maybe we've started some of the products, but we haven't finished it yet. But then there would also be units that we started and completed during this period. So in this case, it becomes a bit more complicated. Why is that? So if you think of the process itself, this is a diagram we like to use in process costing called the stage of completion diagram. So for opening work in process, so say it's 40% complete. So that's the 40% stage on completion right there. And we still need to incur the 60% to finish this product. So that is the poor part of the work for the opening working process that still needs to be done in the current period. So that needs to be added to the costs above the line of the cost um, per unit calculation. Then we would have units that we started during this period and completed during this period. So if you look at the stage of completion diagram, we would have incurred all the costs to start and finish the units in the current period. And then closing work in process, let's say that's 50% complete. So if we draw a diagram for that 50%, that would mean in the current period we've started but not finished the product. So you can see these red lines, this year, that's the costs that we incurred in the current period. So that goes above the line. So when we calculate cost per unit, we can only include the units or the, the work that we've done in the current period. And that's why we need to calculate what is called equivalent units. So a big part of process costing and a lot of the marks associated with the process costing question goes into calculating the equivalent units. And then the different cost components, we have to do material and conversion costs separately. The reason for that is materials are usually added at the start of the process, whereas conversion costs are incurred evenly throughout the period. So that creates a bit of a problem. So, And conversion costs consist of our labor and our overheads or manufacturing overheads. And we can add them together because they both are incurred evenly throughout the period. And then finally you need to be um, 
comfortable in doing process costing user, uh, using either the first in first out method or the weighted average method of inventory valuations. You must be very comfortable with the two methods and we need to um, be able to deal with normal and am abnormal losses, losses in process costing and know what the difference is between normal and abnormal losses. So if anything um, in this recap of process costing is unfamiliar to you or you haven't done it before or you've done it but you've forgotten how to do it, then I strongly advise that you go through the revision section of process costing and there's also a revision, the revision section of the first in, first out and the weighted average method of inventory valuation. And there's also a section on job costing, if you forgot about job costing or um, how to do it. You don't need that for process costing, but um, it's also something that could be asked uh, in an exam.